All right, in this video, I'm going to show you how um, to install OpenVPN or really configure OpenVPN on a PFSense firewall. So let's go ahead and we're going to log in here. To set up your OpenVPN, we're looking at this VPN menu here and we're going to choose OpenVPN. Uh, for now, we have no servers, nothing. So we need to click Wizards here. And the first decision you are going to be making is um, the authentication type. And we are going to be using local user access. There's options to use separate servers on LDAP or Radius. We're going to use local user access because that means the usernames and passwords, certificates, everything is going to be stored on the PFSense itself. So we hit next here, local user access. Now we need to set up a certificate authority. Now, um, those of you that don't know what a certificate authority is, you're probably gonna have to really kind of look it up, but this is the, the thing that validates certificates on for anything. And you need certificates in order to get your OpenVPN to work. And so what we're gonna do here is we can actually call this anything we want. So OpenVPN local user access CA is just the default they put in. OpenVPN local user access certificate authority. And actually this is fine. So we're gonna leave that there. And then we are going to go ahead and down here. I'm just gonna use US for the country code and I think that looks good, so we'll hit go for it. Now we need to do a server certificate. Now before we had to set up a, a certificate authority, this is creating a server certificate under that authority. Um, I'm calling this uh, vpn.it419.com uh, you can pretty much call it anything you want. The certificate's name is, um, anyway, this stuff is fine. I actually went ahead and put in Virginia and Norfolk because that's where I am. You can put in an organization too. The extra information is actually not 100% necessary. So we need to go ahead and do create a new certificate. That was the client certificate. Now we're gonna set up what the server kind of looks like. We're gonna be using the WAN interface. Most of this we're just gonna leave for here. For this description, I typed this in, remote file server access, and we're gonna leave these as is, uh, TLS authentication, and we're gonna generate the TLS key. This doesn't need to be messed with. Down here, we need to know two things. The first thing is you need to know what your local network is. So this is the local network, basically the LAN network of your PFSense. The tunnel network is the IP addresses that are gonna be assigned for the uh, remote clients. So I use an adjacent network here. Um, you uh, probably need to work on this uh, separately if you don't know it, but what I've done here is, this is two adjacent networks, meaning each one of them has a 24-bit subnet mask by themselves, but together I could route to them with a 23-bit subnet mask. That makes them adjacent networks. Um, they recommend you do this for routing purposes. It actually doesn't 100% matter that obviously the local network needs to be correct. The tunnel network you can have um, separate from this. Uh, okay, so that's exciting there. I'm gonna allow all this stuff. Most of this stuff is gonna just stay as is. Some of this is stuff I entered before I deleted it already. Uh, dynamic IP, we're very excited here. This is something I entered in. This actually uh, doesn't 100% matter either. I just made up a default domain. This will be that you know the clients coming in are gonna have a domain name that ends with it419.com. Uh, DNS server here, this is the one on the local area network. 
And so that's my actually being provided by my PFSense now. You'll notice that's using the same IP address. So that one's uh, very exciting. And then we're gonna go down here. This other stuff we just leave off. We don't need NetBIOS or WINS. That's a, kind of a something, those of you that know that will know what to do. So we're gonna hit next here. Uh, next thing you need to do, these are normally, I believe, unchecked when you start fresh. So these both need to be checked because we need a rule that's gonna allow um, incoming clients and we need a rule that the, um, this is lets the clients connect to your PFSense and this will let your clients go um, out of the PFSense. So we need to hit next here. That's very exciting. And now we're done, at least with this wizard, okay? Once we're done here, you'll see this, all this server set up. Um, this is, very fascinating. Um, I think we don't need to worry about that for now. What we're gonna do now though is go ahead and we're gonna create a client. So I'm gonna create a client and this is in the user manager. So I need to create that a user can log in. So I go under user manager, I'm gonna add a new user and let's call this user um, Pat. And we'll give Pat a password. And we will confirm the password. Okay. Now Pat is going to need a certificate, but if you click this box, I don't like, or the way this certificate thing on this box looks is actually different than this other one. And I'm used to the other one. So right now I'm gonna hit save. And here I'm gonna go back and edit Pat. And notice down here we have effective privileges and user certificates. In this section, I need to add a user certificate for Pat. And Pat does need um, their own internal certificate. And it is for Pat. Notice here, this is my um, certificate authority I created earlier. Under the common name, I'm just gonna put in a, the DNS name I used earlier. So mine was it419.com. Um, I've tested this and if you, you can see there, I have my autofill. I was doing some, trying to mess around with this and trying to get it to not work. And it just seems to work no matter what. So what else I need to do down here under the user attributes here, full acquired. Um, anyway, in here, um, this actually doesn't really matter either, but I'm gonna put here it or 19.com and um, like I said, this also doesn't matter. So here I'm gonna hit save and then Pat now has a certificate added. So I scroll down a little bit, there's Pat. And I'm gonna save Pat also. And so here's Pat, uh, you can, they don't have a certificate manager. So notice by the way, if you go under system under cert manager, here's all the certificates. Here's your certificate authority. So here's the one I created, OpenBP on local user access. It's a self-signed certificate authority. I have a bunch of certificates associated with that now. So here's Pat. Pat has a user certificate um, the VPN server itself has its own server certificate. By the way, this one up here is for the web configurator and this is how your web configurator gets its certificate. So there's other, um, anyway, you can think about that yourself. Uh, from here, notice you don't have a delete option because these are associated with people. If I deleted Pat, I would be able to delete this certificate. Um, if I delete the server, um, it will, I can delete that too. So that's very exciting, but this is where the certificates are. So that's um, basically, I'm more or less done now with the VPN setup. I can go back here and you can see, you know, here we are in the WAN. There's no one connected in here and we're going to actually needing to create um, our, the client configurations. Uh, this is actually quite easy. If you go into packet, package manager, what we need to do is install a package that's called the uh, open 
uh, VPN. I'm just going to do a search for OpenVPN because what I want is the OpenVPN client export package. Okay. So we're going to install this. I'm going to confirm that. It's going to run its business here. Do, 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 do. A little more thinking, but now we're successfully completed there. Alrighty, now we're going to go back to our OpenVPN, and under here you'll notice we have a thing that says Client Export. Now, Client Export is going to show um, you know what your server you're connected to. So that's my remote, my server, the one I just set up. Um, it's possible to have more of these. Um, Basically, most of this, you can just leave it. Uh, some of the interesting things here, you can check this box, which will limit people to the inside the OpenVPN or their VPN. Um, you can also do some other stuff we aren't going to worry about here. Where's the one to route all traffic through the VPN? So funny. All right, we'll worry about that later. Anyway, so down here is a user um, installer for each user, okay? And one of the big hassles of using any VPN or these types is each user will have their own certificate. So this is for Pat, who I just created. Um, here, I'm just gonna note, um, if you do this most clients, that will let you download a sort of a bundled info packet and I'm gonna be using that because I'm on a Mac and I can't use the uh, bundled Windows installer. So I'm gonna hit that one and it will just download it. I wanna save that file and notice here it's pfSense and it's for Pat. And so this is what I would kind of send to Pat and say here's your, your VPN configuration. If you're on Windows, uh, they have some decent stuff here. If I do this one, it's actually not the most recent version of OpenVPN. And I can also just save this file and install that in a Windows computer. And let me just show you that one really quickly. So if I go to here, I'm just gonna run it on this machine. So let's run that file. Let me just open that file. And then I'll just show you kind of what this looks like on this machine, what's going on. It's one of those great times when if you keep clicking it, it's just gonna keep going. Oh, there it is. All right, so here we go. Let's use setup type. I can just go ahead and hit install now. And this first thing is installing OpenVPN, like the actual project or the executable file and all of its dependencies. So this is installing OpenVPN. And if I hit close here, it's gonna do another install and this install is going to do the client configuration, okay? So basically on, as far as I know, on a Windows machine, if you installed regular OpenVPN um, and then just installed that configuration, then you should be able to get to the same place. This does it in a double pack and we're all very excited. If you'll notice here, there's my OpenVPN. Oops, that should be here. Um, this is actually a leftover error message because there's no configuration right when you first install it and now it's done. The way you connect with your OpenVPN is in the hidden icon section and it's not running here. And I am not going to worry about why it's not running because I'm on a Mac anyway and we're going to run it a different way. So I'm going to just stop right here and then we'll get back into the Mac version. So I'll see you in a minute. All right, so here I am, I'm back. Uh, what I need to do on my Mac here is install a program called uh, TunnelBlick. Okay. Um, there's plenty of open VPN clients here. I can download the latest table release. This is very exciting. It's going to download it quite, quite nicely. Uh, this runs just like a sort of a normal um, Mac client. So here it is here. 
connected as a thing. Hopefully there's nothing weird going on on my machine. Let me move that out of the way. All right, and then this is kind of fun. Um, it's kind of funny that you start with a double click. So this is a German thing. Um, I actually don't need to, to run that because I already installed it. So I'm actually just going to close this. And I'm going to install Tunnel Blick or run Tunnel Blick. It actually comes in my Applications folder. Let me actually just bring that up over here. So I'm in my Applications folder. It's also in my dock here if I run Tunnel Blick. It's going to be on here. A new version is available. I'm going to worry about that later. And then it's running. You can't see it, but it's in my menu here. And what I want to do is I'm going to open up the VPN details. All right, so here's the tunnel blick window, and this shows uh, my configurations. Uh, what I need to do actually right now is I need to flip back into my IPFSense. All right, so here we are on my PC, and I need to get this PAT config downloaded to my Mac. Um, I'm actually just going to do it through here. I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to go to this. And those of you watching in TV land probably know that it's possible to, um, you should be able to drag and drop it, but it doesn't seem to work here. Anyway, so here's my PAT configuration. Now it's on my Mac. We're going to switch back into the bar tunnel blick. All right, let me just show here. So here's my PAT config, and I just drag that up into here. I have to authenticate as a user, as an administrator, no matter what. So I'm going to just drag that in here so you can see it. And I authenticate here. And now there's PFSense. You can't see the thing. Installed one configuration successfully. Now if I hit connect, it will go through the sequence of logging in. So there's Pat. There is Pat's password. And we can watch the log go by. And it's very exciting. Up here, Tunnel Blick will show me connected. This is a little thing that shows in the top corner of my screen. Here's a few errors here. The IP address was not different. That's fine. Uh, the DNS is not a public address. And that's actually fine too. All right, so now that we are connected, we can go ahead and do our connect to server thing. I'm going to bring that up here so you can see it. And here it's going to be, this is how you connect on a Mac to a Windows Server Share, smb colon slash slash IP address of the server and then the share name. If I hit connect here, it's going to do some little dance. Attempting to connect and I hit continue. And here I need to be a registered user. And in this case, I'm just, I don't have administrator. I didn't have any extra user set up, but this would be a valid user on that computer. And when I hit connect here, um, you know, now I can connect. So here's that data for the, there it is right there. Um, you'll notice here if I disconnect this, and we'll go ahead and just close that back out, and I disconnect my VPN. And then if I go back in and try to connect, this is where we're like, hey, this shouldn't work. And it correctly doesn't work. Like this is going to time out and it's going to take a little while. But anyway, you saw earlier that it connected really fast. Uh, so that's it. So hopefully you're able to get your VPN working. Um, in this case, obviously, I'm on my same computer, but the same rules apply to over a bigger network. Thanks for watching.